two of my favorite parks. I invite you to close your eyes. We meditate on the glory of our Creator, who has created the universe, who is worthy of worship, who is the embodiment of knowledge and light, who is the remover of sin and ignorance. May he open our hearts and understand. And in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, all praise is due to him, Lord of the universe, the most gracious, the most merciful, ruler of the day of judgment, you alone do we worship, and you alone we turn to for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace. Not the way of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Thank you. And all thanks be to God, the compassionate, the beneficent, to He without name, the all powerful. Ever since I can remember, I have studied God in all of His many forms. When I was four, I was obsessed with ancient mythologies Greek, Celtic, Norse, Egyptian. When I was five, I would read. Hindu stories about Lord Ram, Lord Krishna, the Pandavas, and the Kauravas. God was a better superhero than Spider Man. <laughs> when I was six, 9 11 was just a Tuesday. I only remember skinning my knee after riding my bike. I don't remember our world collapsing. I do not remember our fall from grace, the broken limbs of our once proud skyscrapers. But I would grow to remember the deep wounds rising from our hatred. I do remember that grief and anger and prejudice, these emotions were the coyotes that howled in our window panes. The barricades blockading people who looked like me from acceptance and trust. Truth. I was bullied. Illusion. My bullies were flesh and blood. Truth, it was no human who slammed me into lockers. No human who shoved my cheek against the train tracks. It was this grief and this anger and this prejudice, these waking terrors ensured I ate alone. Eyes shining with pocketed laser light. It was distrust who shepherded my slow walk home from school each day. Intolerance ensured it was the only place to go to after the bell rang. At a school taught by Sisters of Mercy, I felt hatred for my God, my voice, my skin. Once I could not stop washing my hands for 10 minutes, I just wanted to scrub this feeling out of me, this color out of me. I thought it was my differences that fueled my suicidal thoughts in the night, but such difference is Maya. A Sanskrit word meaning worldly illusion, mirage, untruth, the truth. Injustice has no excuse and is merely the passing shadow of cruelty and tyranny. Mankind is united. For instance, medical anthropology has shown there is no genetic difference between whites or Indians or blacks or Hispanics or Native Americans. We are the same in the eyes of God, united by Him, if nothing else. Today I stand before you to break Maya, to strip an illusion from a small corner of this world. Truth, there is no difference between the major religions. Truly, our differences are illusory. There is no religion. I'm so sorry. Why do I believe this? My search for God grew from the seeds of my misery. I was so scared. My anxiety reached crippling levels. I had no friends. I rarely left my room. Within it, I compulsively exercised for hours and hours each day. When I was spent, I drowned out my thoughts on TV. I stopped speaking in school for two months. I stopped doing homework. I stopped speaking to my family. I stopped playing music, and eventually I stopped sleeping. And I wanted to breathe again without fear. So I searched for God in his many forms, 
trying to find the true religion that would protect me, that would give me peace. One week I would study the great schism of Christianity, and the next I would research the Hajj, and the next I would read Buddhist sutras. Inspired by Hinduism and Zen, I meditated ceaselessly. When I lay awake, sleepless at night, I alternated recitations of the Our Father and Baha'i prayers and the Gayatri Mantra. I used my favorite blanket as a prayer mat one night. I did not know the Namaz, but I stuck my head to the floor and I prayed nonetheless. Today I still battle the specters of that same pain, but I'm much calmer and much wiser. Did my faith save me? I don't know. But after grappling with so many faiths, academically and spiritually, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, Baha'i, and Buddhism, I say with confidence, there is no religion that is truest. And there is only one faith in God. Our paths are separate, like the countless rivers and streams of the world, but these separate paths are unified by their search for the ocean, truth, the Lord, holds the prayers of all tongues and all faiths sacred. The most fundamental phrase of Islam, there is no God but God. The Ten Commandments of Genesis, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me, the Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord. Even those devotees who worship others with faith, they truly worship me, because I alone am supreme. I alone, the enjoyer of all service and Lord of the universe, the Baha'i prayer, thy unity is impenetrable, O oh my God. Listen to the music of this common song of worship, the rustle of the different fingers of God reaching through the people of the world, united through difference, independent but part of the same hand. Let me repeat, there is no God but God. And he has challenged us to reconcile these different images of him. Allah, Yahweh, Christ, Krishna. And some have said this is a test for the true believers. That there is only one path to God. But what test by our Lord would condemn the innocent because they honor him in a form that dances in perfect unison with their souls. This prejudice is a spiritual cancer. This prejudice is the bullying of an innocent child in the next crusade. It is fundamentalist terrorism, and it is racial slurs shouted on the streets, and to those people who hate others, for their prayer mats, for their idols, for their yamitas, for their churches. Do not impose your hatred on God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, Verse 8, he has declared, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Do not impugn his motives with your intolerance. Exclusion is incompatible with the Lord of all things, who loves all with equal compassion and mercy. And as God is infinite, so there are infinitely many paths to him. Even conscientious atheism is just one more. Any name of God is just a name of the unnameable, a face of the transcendent, a finite rendition of his infinite capacity, and attempting to confine God to any singular viewpoint is as futile as attempting to reach the sun with a kite. In a hadith, we are reminded that God is far greater than the 99 attributes given to him in the Quran. We all possess an ability to see a different face of our Lord, to greet him with just one of his names. A name we can only sing deep in our bones. Our heart is quoting psalms that our mouths do not even know the words to. In the Second Vatican Council, Pope John Paul XXIII shared the good news saying, the plan of salvation includes those who along with us adore the one and merciful God, but nor is God far distant from those who in shadows and images seek the unknown God, for it is he who gives to all men life and breath and all things. Nor does divine providence deny salvation to those who have not yet arrived at an explicit knowledge of God, 
but with his grace, strive to live a good life. So says the Lumen Gentium, the light for all people. Atheist, Buddhist, Jain, Sikh, Baptist, Catholic, all people. Salvation, without regard for color or caste or creed. Even ancient religious under institutions now understand it is time to put aside our fists and raise the open hand of friendship. It is time for these long estranged brothers and sisters to rebuild the family home together. And it is time for us to seek him out in all his beautiful forms. It is time for us to open our eyes, hear the good news. We are one. I challenge Catholics to attend Juma and Sunnis to sing Hebrew songs. I challenge Jews to sing universal arti and Hindus to attend Baptist services. And I challenge you to find God within the world around you as well. For he is omnipresent. He is within the smallest ant, the proudest mountain, and every human soul on earth. You, me, children holding hands, weary mothers, alcoholic fathers struggling to make ends meet, each person captures the smallest fragment of what it means to be God. Each person is like an atom on God's fingertip. Can the atom conceive of the actions of the hand, let alone the legs or the mind? Of course not. But is it part of the body? Undoubtedly, such are we before God. We are restlessly flowing molecules of water who cannot imagine the deep cuts of the Pacific. Listlessly blown grains of sand who cannot imagine the immensity of our Sahara. But every human being contains God nonetheless. It sanctifies our world. It gives us purpose and meaning. And since we all possess God, we honor him by serving one another. Serving, protecting, and cherishing family, friends, and strangers is worshiping God manifest on earth. The sermon ends here and now with my final prayer. For that day when the call of the Muslim rings in beautiful harmony Protestant church bells tolling at the hour. For that day when the hammers of the Peace Corps and the ladles serve in chili at the soup kitchen sing the budgeons of my ancestors, as school children of different skin colors recite Yom Kippur prayers. For the day when we free our shackled hearts, that day when we recognize that our God is one and the same, that day when we open our blinds and tear off our shutters and unleash the sunlight of tolerance into our hearts, for that day when we will truly worship together, not with pomp or ceremony, but with shovel and hammer, building a society on our earth in God's image. Pray for that day when we will truly serve our Lord, who is mighty, who is worthy of worship. And this is the true, to me at any rate, religion. This, in the end, with our hearts bare to one another and God, when everything is left out in the open, is our only religion. <laughs>